Thanks for joining us on this special edition of ABC 24 News. I'm Kevin McNamara, and I'm joined here right off the top with meteorologist Corey Smith for a look at the forecast. Corey, I know we finally had some of those rains disappear. Yeah, it's still a little bit of a drizzle out there, but bit. not that steady, heavy rain that we saw yesterday. So it's some improvement. I'm glad we didn't see it for too long. Yeah, and I will say as you go tomorrow, we're starting to dry up just a little bit, but still pretty gloomy out there. If we take a look outside right now, uh, definitely a misty evening here across the Mid-South. We only got up to 75 degrees, well below average for this time of the year, but temperatures will be back into the 80s as they get a little bit later on into this upcoming week. So we are going to warm up. More importantly, we're going to see some sunshine return. You can see this upper level low. This is what ingested Helene, and uh, you can see a lot of moisture with it. It's spinning over Kentucky and Tennessee tonight, and we've seen some drizzle and some mess here across the Mid-South this evening. That'll continue into your early Sunday as well. We can't rule out a stray shower, but overall, we're talking about that cloudy, gloomy feel as we head into your Sunday. Temperature is cooler, but we do start to warm up closer to average this time of the year, low to mid-80s by the end of the week with plenty of sunshine. So Let's get into what you can expect if you are heading out tonight. Uh, temperatures a little bit cooler, 68 degrees around 7 p.m., 67 around 1 o'clock in the morning. And between that, we can't rule out a stray light shower or some drizzle. And that's going to be the case as we head into tomorrow morning as well. So around a 10% chance of rain. Temperatures in the low to mid 60s to start things off. Taking a look hour by hour, what you can expect as we head into your Sunday. Very much more the same. We have this cloud cover, some drizzle, some mist, and maybe some light showers once again as we get into your Sunday. This is 10 a.m. right around 70 degrees. If we are heading out to church in the morning, I think we might see a couple spotty showers, but overall, I think uh, nothing too bad. It shouldn't ruin any plans for your Sunday. And as you get into the afternoon, we can't rule out seeing a couple splotches of sunshine and getting in there, but overall, mostly cloudy as we get into your afternoon. Temperatures uh, going to be stuck in the 70s once again for tomorrow. So tomorrow afternoon, what things are looking like right now, mostly cloudy. Low to mid 70s here across the mid-south. So below average once again for this time of the year. But a warm up is on the way. This low pressure does start to erode. And with that, we are going to watch high pressure build in as you go into next week. So tomorrow, just a repeat of what we saw today pretty much. But as you get into the beginning of next week, we're tracking a cold front. As you go into Tuesday and Wednesday, we're not expecting any rain with this cold front. And it doesn't really cool us down. The most important is that it's going to at least bring us some sunshine and some drier weather into the middle and end of next week. So overall, things looking a little bit better. We just have to wait a couple days to finally get there. So your seven day forecast going forward 75 degrees tomorrow. We can't rule out a stray shower, mostly cloudy skies or partly cloudy on your Monday with a high of 79 up to 82 average for this time of the year on Tuesday with plenty of sunshine. That cold front drops our temperatures a little bit on Wednesday. We're down to 78 degrees with sunshine, but we're back into the low 80s as you get into the end of the week. Thursday 83 degrees and then we're still sitting in the low to mid 80s as we head into the end of the week and next weekend. At least 52 people have died as a result of Hurricane Helene. Fatalities confirmed in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia. You're looking at devastation left behind in North Carolina. Roads across the western part of the state remain impassable. And near the Tennessee border, Interstate 40 was destroyed after part of it washed away in a landslide. Many Tennesseans have felt the effects of Helene as well. So how can you help them? Well, there's a number of different things. You can donate money to the Salvation Army. They'll be sending its emergency disaster services team to East Tennessee. The Anderson County Sheriff's Office is asking for bottled water donations, and many others are asking for food and water donations. You can find a full list of how you can help on our website, abc24.com. And we just finished week three in the federal trial for the ex-MPD officers charged in the death of Tyree Nichols. After the prosecution rested Thursday, the defense began calling witnesses to the stand and focused on the actions of ex-officer Tadarius Bean. Some of the video you are about to see is hard to watch. John Perry, the defense attorney for ex-MPD officer Tadarius Bean, called a retired police chief to the stand as an expert witness on use of force. After reviewing the footage from Tyree Nichols' arrest, John Tisdale stated that he did not see any actions from Bean that violated MPD policy. We also heard from a former MPD officer who discussed the types of head strikes officers are trained to use. The trial will resume Monday morning, where the defense will continue to call up their witnesses. ABC 24 will be there, as we've been covering this trial from gavel to gavel. But another big trial has been the ongoing Young Dolph trial. 
Justin Johnson now sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Memphis rapper Young Dolph. A jury found Johnson guilty Thursday after just four hours of deliberation. Johnson was one of three people charged, but was the only person on trial this week. The other two men charged are Cornelius Smith and Hernandez Govan. Their court dates were reset. Govan is due back for a hearing October 9th, while Smith will appear November 15th. Just weeks out the door, the former chair of the Memphis Shelby County School Board dropping a bombshell, sending a letter to the current board that flat out says hiring Superintendent Dr. Marie Fagans was a mistake. Althea Green's letter also outlines key situations and questions Fagan's leadership since she got the job. Our Desmond Nugent talked to Green about this bold move. Two pages with seven concerns in a letter sent by former MSCS board chair Althea Green to current board commissioners. She expresses why Superintendent Dr. Marie Fagans should not have been hired to run the district. I did go back to HYA. Uh, who was the company that we hired, and I questioned them. When you received her resume, did you go back and check it out in January prior to bringing her as a candidate to Memphis? And the answer was no. Some of those concerns for Green include Dr. Fagan's making personnel changes without consulting the board on the intended job cuts this past summer, her wanting to transition early as a superintendent without the aid of the board or previous superintendent, an overall lack of communication when making tough decisions. She also brings up parents not being informed about children bringing a gun to school and making a late call when closing schools due to weather, which Fagan says a company they use to send out notifications is to blame. I think a great leader will own problems. What I do see is every time something go wrong, oh, the communication department didn't do this. Oh, the, the company didn't see, send the messages to the parents. A good leader will accept responsibility and stop trying to throw everybody else under the bus because of your mistakes. Green wants to keep new board members informed on what's happened in the district as they begin to evaluate her performance. She's worked with Fagans for six months while they have worked alongside the superintendent for one month. Despite public criticism, community advocate Sarah Carpenter with Memphis Lift believes Dr. Fagans has not been given a fair shake on turning the district around. This lady ain't been here a year yet and they done nailed up to the cross, man. And it's not fair. It's not fair. Who knows? She might bring these departments back. She may bring them back. I don't know. But they got to give this lady a fair chance. Dr. Fagan's midterm evaluation is expected to be submitted by November 1st. We did reach out to the district to make a comment about Green's letter. With less than six weeks to go until Election Day, local early voting and mail-in ballots are facing lawsuits. In Mississippi, the Republican National Committee is suing over mail-in ballot policies that target postmarked mail ballots received after Election Day. In Crittenden County, Arkansas, two women filed suit against the County Elections Commission for failing to designate an early voting location in West Memphis. These cases could have significant implications for mail-in ballots and early voting locations for states with similar election laws. ABC 24 political commenter Otis Sanford expressed concerns about what he calls attempted voter suppression. This just falls right into what I see as the Republican Party playbook to stifle voting, to suppress the vote, uh, and, and, and really to try to rig elections. We'll have more on the possibility of either case ending up before the Supreme Court in the coming weeks and what the Mississippi Attorney General had to say at 10. Elvis Presley Boulevard is a street with the second most visited home in the country after the White House is set to get what neighbors in Whitehaven were promised years ago. The street's revitalization project was put on hold for months by TDOT. But this past week, the department freed up $9 million to the city of Memphis to get the ball rolling again. Soon, Elvis Presley Boulevard between Winchester and Kraft Roads will get the facelift neighbors believe is long overdue. You're hitting a bump here, you're hitting a bump there, you're hitting a pothole here, uh, some uneven leverage there uh, on the pavement. It's been delayed, delayed, and as we say in the community, a lot of times delayed is a denial. The road work should start sometime early next year. Saving a generation. This evening, we're highlighting efforts to seek solutions to the opioid crisis across Arkansas. 
The Arkansas Opioid Recovery Partnership has given community grants to drug-free programs across the state. And this week, seven grants worth $125,000 each were awarded to groups working to prevent substance abuse in teens. We knew it was hitting our adults, that population between 25 and 55. But who has, what is 25 and 55, what do they have? Kiddos that are going to school. So how do we best do this? We get the kiddos to start talking in the homes. Those grants will last for five years. Barnes says applications for the next five-year term will open next March. Whether it's keeping your child safe or maybe something else, ABC24 is committed to helping you seek solutions. So you have a concern you want us to look into? Text the word solutions and a summary of your story to 901-321-7520. That's solutions and your concern to 901-321-7520. All right, check this out. Before we go, the SpaceX mission set to bring back the Starliner NASA astronauts has officially started its trek to the stars. SpaceX crew has been stuck on the International Space Station since June. The crew, at nine, space, the crew nine spacecraft left Cape Canaveral, Florida, earlier this afternoon after a two-day delay thanks to Hurricane Helene. The craft is expected to arrive at the ISS tomorrow night. That's all we have right here on this special digital edition of ABC 24. We will see you after all the football is done on ABC 24 News at 10.